in the module of uh, random vectors we started with the two and high dimensional random variables and we discussed the joint distributions first we discussed the cdf of a two dimensional random variable then we have generalized this into the n dimensional random variable how the cdf look like with several variables then we started discussing joint probability mass function whenever the underlying random variables are of the discrete type that means we have a n dimensional random vector with each random variable is going to be of the discrete type now we are coming into joint probability density function let me start with the two dimensional random variable let x and y be continuous type random variables with the joint distribution that is capital f that is basically a function of x comma y then the joint probability density function small f is defined as a function of x comma y by taking partial derivative of cdf with respect to x and y it's a second order partial derivative which is same as the partial derivative of a cdf with respect to y x since uh, we have a continuous type random variable the cdf uh, is a continuous function in both x and y since it is a continuous function both and x and y by taking a partial derivative with respect to x and y that is going to be the probability density function of x comma y that is uh, <coughs> same as the cdf of a two dimensional continuous type random variable can be written in the form of a double integration with respect to x and y that means uh, since uh, both the random variables are of the continuous type the cdf of a two dimensional continuous type random variable is a continuous function in both x and y one can write a cdf in the form of double integration from minus infinity to y minus infinity to x the sum integrand small f t comma s t d t s here the the integrand is the joint probability density function it is similar to one dimensional random variable in which the x is of the continuous type random variable then the cdf of x can be written in the form of integration of some integrand and that is a probability density function of the random variable x the same way we are writing a, for a two dimensional continuous type random variable therefore the probability density function is nothing but the second order partial derivative of cdf with respect to x and y 
since it is a continuous function in both x and y, whether you change the order of partial derivative does not matter, it is going to be the same. So, once you know the joint probability density function of x comma y, one can find the probability density function of uh, one random variable. That means, uh, from the joint probability density function, so here the x comma y small f. So, this is the joint probability density function of the random variable x comma y. From the joint probability density function, one can always get the marginal distribution of x comma y. That is a marginal distributions. From the joint probability density function, one can get the marginal distribution of one random variable by integrating the joint probability density function with respect to y. Similarly, we can get the probability density function of the random variable y by integrating the joint probability density function of x comma y with respect to x. The same thing we have done it for uh, discrete type random variable. So, this is a continuous type random variable. Therefore, the marginal distribution of x comma x and y can be obtained from the joint distribution of the random variable x comma y. One can verify how this is going to be the probability density function of x and how this is going to be a probability density function of y, because uh, the this function f of uh, x is going to be always greater than or equal to 0. And if you integrate uh, minus infinity to infinity, the probability density function of uh, x that is going to be a double integration minus infinity to infinity, the joint probability density function of x comma y. Therefore, uh, we know that uh, the double integration from minus infinity to infinity joint probability density function this is going to be 1. Therefore, it is the properties of the joint probability density function the properties of uh, the joint probability density function is uh, this is always going to be greater than or equal to 0 for all x comma y belonging to real. And the second condition from minus infinity to infinity the double integration the joint probability density function is uh, always going to be 1. That means, uh, if you have any real valued function with the two variables satisfying these two conditions may be a joint probability density function of some two dimensional uh, random variables. If you have a two dimensional uh, random variables of continuous type then which has the joint probability density function that satisfies these two properties. The first property gives uh, the value is going to be always greater than or equal to 0 and this double integration is going to be 1 that is nothing but uh, the volume below the surface of uh, f of x comma y that is going to be 1. The way we say for the single random variable of a continuous type the probability density function is greater than or equal to 0 and the integration 1 means uh, the area below the curve that is going to be 1. The same as here for a two dimensional random variable the volume below the surface that surface is f of x comma y that is going to be 1. So, only one can uh, visualize uh, or make a graphical representation for a single dimension random variable and a two dimensional random variable not more dimensions. Therefore, uh, we started uh, explaining a two dimensional random variable with the graphical representation 
not for any more and any more dimension the same uh, concept can be extended for n dimensional random variable that means uh, this is a n dimensional random variables of continuous type means uh, each random variable is a continuous type random variable therefore uh, we get a uh, n dimensional random variables of the continuous type that means uh, it has the cdf with the n variables this is the cdf uh, of the n dimensional random variable we have a uh, the joint probability density function with the n variables x1, x2 and so on. This is a joint probability density function. Whenever uh, you need to find out the uh, probability of uh, x belonging to x1, x2, xn belonging to some <coughs> Borel set uh, some uh, capital B which is in the Rn, the B is belonging to Rn, then that is nothing but uh, finding out the probability is nothing but uh, the n dimensional uh, integration over uh, the Borel set capital B of uh, the joint uh, probability density function yes. for n dimensional random variable if you know the each random variable of the continuous type then you have a CDF similarly you have a joint probability density function and you can always uh, find uh, probability of uh, all the n dimensional random variable takes a values in the Borel set where Borel set is uh, from the Rn that is nothing but uh, n dimensional integration over uh, capital B of joint probability density function with respect to all the variables. The way we got the probability belonging to the B one can find uh, the probability density function of any one random variable. for i is equal to 1 to n you can always find the marginal distribution of any one random variable from the joint distribution of n dimensional by integrating the joint probability density function of n dimensional random variable with respect to x1, x i minus 1, x i plus 1, x n. You can always get the marginal uh, distribution of uh, any one random variable from the joint distribution of n dimension random variable which is of the continuous type. Now we will move into one simple example how one can uh, describe the two dimensional uh, random variable of the continuous type then how one can discuss uh, the marginal distribution and finding out the probabilities and so on. Let us start with the easy example. The example is uh, let x and y be random variables of a continuous type with a joint probability density function is given by f of x comma y that takes the value 
some constant times x square divided by y cube whenever x takes a value from 0 to 1 and y takes a value greater than 2. Otherwise, it is going to be 0. So, you can think of uh, some surface in the three dimension plane x is one coordinate y is another coordinate and z that is the joint probability density function. So, that means you have a surface which is greater than 0 the value is going to be greater than 0 in between uh, x is lies between 0 to 1 and y is from 2 to infinity in that uh, the function is going to be greater than 0 that is k times x square by y cube otherwise uh, it is 0 therefore the volume below that uh, it is going to be 1. Now the question is uh, since I have made uh, constant times x square by y cube first you have to find out what is the k in which the given function with the two variables is going to be a joint probability density function. After that you have to find out some more results. So, the first question is find k. So, that this is going to be a joint probability density function of a two dimensional random variables of continuous type. Second question find probability of uh, x is less than 1 by 2 and y is greater than uh, 6 that is the second question it is similar to identifying the probability of x lies between uh, x uh, belonging to some uh, Borel set the third question find out uh, the probability density function of the random variable x. The fourth question is find out the probability density function of uh, the random variable y. So, these are all the four questions uh, for this problem. It is a easy problem. So, let us go for uh, finding out uh, what is the value of k in which it is going to be joint probability density function. We know that uh, the property of joint probability density function is always going to be greater than or equal to 0 and the double integration has to be 1. So, use uh, double integration the joint probability density function is going to be 1. But uh, this joint probability density function is uh, greater than 0 between uh, some interval. So, we can make out uh, the interval 0 to 1 and 2 to infinity the function is k times uh, x square by y cube dy dx that is equal to 1 0 to 1 2 to infinity k times x square by y cube uh, dy dx uh, has to be 1. You do the simple calculation over this integration you can come to the conclusion the k value has to be 24. Therefore, the joint probability density function is 24 times x square divided by y cube when x lies between 0 to 1 y is greater than 2 otherwise 0. So, we have answered the first question. Second one, find out uh, the probability of x lies between x is less than 1 by 2 and y is uh, greater than 6. So, this is nothing but this is nothing but the double integration of uh, the joint probability density function with respect to y between 6 to infinity with respect to x it is from 0 to 1 by 2. Here also if you do the integration and do the simplification you can get the answer it is 
3889 multiplied by 10 power minus 2. I am not uh, spending time on uh, the integration. You can do the integration and you can get the answer that is uh, I am using the concept of uh, the probability of uh, I am using this concept of a probability of a n, inter n random variable belonging to the Borel set is nothing but a integration of a n dimensional random variable over the Borel set. The same concept is used to compute the probability of a x less than 1 by 2 and y greater than 6. The same way I am going to use the finding out the marginal distribution from the joint distribution for the Next question. So, the next question is uh, find out uh, the marginal distribution of x, similarly, marginal distribution of y. So, third question the probability density function of x is nothing but uh, integration of the joint probability density function with respect to y and we know that uh, the probability density function is greater than 0 when y is lies between 2 to infinity. Therefore, this is nothing but 2 to infinity the joint probability density function is 24 x square by y cube with respect to y and if you do the little simplification you can get the answer that is uh, 3 times uh, x square. And if you recall the joint probability density function is lies between 0 to 1 for x and for y it is 2 to infinity. Therefore, this probability density function is going to be 3 x square when uh, x is lies between 0 to 1 otherwise it is 0. This is a very easy problem in which uh, the interval of x does not involve y. Sometimes uh, you may have a complication of uh, the interval of x is a function of y or interval of y may be a function of x also. So, you have to use the calculus of several variable and the integration concepts correctly to get the marginal distribution of x. Similarly, you can go for find the probability density function of y that is nothing but integration of a joint probability density function with respect to x. So, here the joint probability density function is greater than 0 when x lies between 0 to 1. So, 0 to 1 and the joint probability density function is 24 x square divided by y cube with respect to x that is same as if you do the little simplification you will get 8 divided by y cube and if recall the range of y is 2 to infinity therefore y is greater than 2 the probability density function of y is 8 divided by y cube 0 otherwise. Otherwise means uh, the probability density function is uh, 0 between uh, minus infinity to 2 from 2 to infinity the value is 8 divided by y cube. We will go for a second problem example 2. In this problem let me discuss x and uh, y be two dimensional continuous type random variables with joint probability density function is given by f of small f. Whenever I use a small f that is a joint probability density function if it is a capital F that means it is a CDF 
cumulative distribution function. So, the here the joint probability density function it takes a value e power minus x when y is lies between 0 to x and x is lies between y to infinity. The range of y and the range of x is a function of other variable 0 otherwise. That means, uh, if you uh, visualize the graphical uh, representation of this joint probability density function x axis, y axis and uh, z axis uh, joint probability density function. So, between the y is lies between 0 to you can make a equal also when y is between uh, 0 to x that means, y is equal to 0 and y is equal to x. So, in that uh, when x lies between y to infinity you have e power minus x surface. That means, uh, the volume below e power minus x uh, between this region in the x y plane that volume is going to be 1. You know e power minus x uh, how it goes. So, as a uh, x tends to infinity it asymptotically touches 0. Therefore, the surface uh, e power minus x goes down over the region of a 0 less than or equal to y less than x less than infinity and the volume below that it is going to be 1. The question is here find probability of x is less than 2 and y is greater than 1. And the second question find the probability of x is greater than 2 times y. And the third question find the probability of x minus y is greater than or equal to 1. It is a very simple problem. The joint probability density function is given finding out the probability of a different uh, Borel sets in R2. We will go for finding the first one. Find the probability of uh, x is lesser than 2, y is greater than 1. That is nothing but the double integration of uh, joint probability density function dx dy, where the integration is over x is lesser than 2 and y is greater than 1. You can always get this integration and we can <coughs> get the final answer. So, the final answer is 9.7209 times 10 power minus 2. I am not evaluating this integration. The integration is over uh, x is less than 2 and y is greater than 1. We will go for the second problem. Find the probability of x is greater than 2 times y. This is also in the similar way double integration the joint probability density function over uh, x is greater than 2y. That is same as the double integration. The function is e power minus x with respect to y that is uh, from 0 to x by 2 because x is greater than 2y. So, the range of y is 0 to x by 2 range of x that is from 0 to infinity. That means, the joint probability density function integration over x is greater than 2y 
where uh, our uh, joint probability density function is greater than 0 when uh, 0 less than or equal to y less than x less than infinity. Therefore, you will get the integration uh, with respect to y is 0 to x by 2 and integration with respect to x is uh, 0 to infinity. If you do the simplification, you can get the answer 1 by 2. So, this is the probability of x is greater than 2 times y. The third problem, the probability of x minus y which is greater than or equal to 1. Again, the same concept that is a double integration of joint probability density function with respect to x and y over x minus y has to be greater than or equal to 1. That is same as the double integration, the joint probability density function is e power minus x with respect to x. The x range is from y plus 1 to infinity and the y range is from 0 to the x range is from y plus 1 to infinity and y range is from 0 to infinity. If you do the simplification, you will get e power minus 1. So, this is a way one can find the probability of any Borel set by integrating the joint probability density function over the range.